Hear the word of the Lord. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your sight. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them, and health to all their body. Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth, and put devious speech far from you. Let your eyes look directly ahead, and let your gaze be fixed straight in front of you. Watch the path of your feet, and all your ways will be established. Do not turn to the right, nor to the left. Turn your foot from evil. So we're going to be looking at these first four verses tonight in our study. And we're going to be looking at, basically the first two verses are going to be looking at attention. It's going to be looking at um, having the Word always before us. Always before us. The Word always coming. Always in front of our eyes. It's here. It's before us. And then we'll come down to verse 22 and we'll talk about in verse 23 basically two of the reasons why that this can be um, one of the why we need to always have the Word of God before us. Everything okay back there? Other kids? Okay. So we're going to be looking at verse 20 and 21. And I want you to notice the first line here. It says, My son, give attention to my words. My son, give attention to my words. And one thing that really strikes us here tonight in our study is just how often, how often, that Solomon says the same thing over and over and over and over. It's almost as if we need to hear that, isn't it? It's almost as if every day we wake up, we have to get the manna new every single day, just like the Israelites did. Uh, It's almost as if if we go to bed at night and wake up and we start our day and go about our day and we don't think about the Lord, it's almost like we have spiritual amnesia. And the reality is that's exactly what it is for us. Solomon reminds us over and over and over because we have to be reminded over and over and over of the things we're talking about. The Christian life is actually, in in many ways, a boring life. Does that excite you tonight? The Christian life is a boring life. What I mean by that is if we are not committed to do the same thing over and over and over and over and over, we will fail in the Christian life. And that's really part of what Solomon says here in chapter 4. If we, if we are not committed to continue on over and over and over and over, over, turning to the Bible every day, you will fail in the Christian life. And I will fail in the Christian life. Um. You know, we had we had Easter Sunday, we had Resurrection Sunday, we had sunrise service. And we think about the resurrection, and yet every single day, every single day is the Lord has given us a resurrection. We go to bed at night, we close our eyes, we go to sleep, we don't know we exist. All of a sudden, we open our eyes up, it's a new day. That is a picture of resurrection. The Lord has built that into our lives every single day. It's also a picture of the Christian life. One day is a picture of the entire Christian life. You wake up, you live your life, you close your eyes and sleep, you are born, you live for the Lord, and then you die. Every day is a picture of the whole Christian life. So every single day, in our own ways, need to be started with The Lord. He says here in verse 20, My son, give attention to my words. Notice how many times he's said that so far. Chapter 1, verse 8. Hear, my son. That's the same concept. The word hear isn't just looking at having information go into your ear. It's talking about hearing to obey the Lord. Hear, my son, your father's 
instruction. Chapter 2, verse 1. My son, if you will receive my words, if you will receive my words, and treasure my commandments within you. How do you know if you've received God's word? It's because you treasure them. That's how you know you've actually received them. Chapter 3, verse 1. My son, do not forget my teaching. Why does he keep reminding us of that? It's because every single day we are tempted to forget. Every single day we're tempted to forget the things of the Lord. Chapter 4, verse 1. Hear, my O sons, the instruction of a father. Hear over and over and over. This is a manual for parents. This is a manual for ministers. Over and over and over we must teach our children as we must be taught as well to hear. Chapter 4, verse 10. Hear, my son. Why does Solomon do this for? It's because his son needs to hear constantly. And we must gather manna every single day. And if you rely on the manna you received yesterday, it will rot and stink, just like the manna for the Israelites. That's why it's one of the spiritual principles you see there. They had to get manna every single morning. And if they tried to keep manna over to the next morning, it would rot and stink. That's like our spiritual life. Uh, we, we had a great experience with the Lord on Monday morning. And we get up Tuesday, we do nothing. We get up Wednesday, we do nothing. That experience on Monday is a rot. It stinks now. Uh, you preach a great sermon, you give a great teaching, and you say, you know what, that really worked last week. I'm going to try it in this other venue. And it's nothing but rot. Everybody knows it, and the preacher knows it. But he keeps on preaching because he has to, and he's supposed to. Every single day, manna must be fresh. Every single day, we must gather from the Lord's garden. Every single day. Chapter 5, verse 1. Getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. My son, give attention to my wisdom. I mean, he just doesn't stop. It's like the Holy Spirit. He doesn't stop. He continues to work in our hearts every single day. If we are Christians, chapter 6, verse 20, My son, observe the commandment of your father. Well, I'll stop there as we turn back to chapter 4. It is this constant reminder, this boring, though we know the Word of God's not boring and we know the Christian life is the only life. It's this constant, every single day, we must keep the Word of God in front of us or we will die. I mean, you, you guys don't think eating's boring. Do you think eating's boring? How many times a day do you eat normally? Three times a day. You try to be healthy, don't you? Three times a day. I mean, don't you have better things to do? <laughs> eating is pretty good. The Bible says every single day this must be in front of us or we will die. And that's why I think one of the reasons constantly Solomon is saying the same thing over and over and over. We don't, there's no flu shots in the Christian life. You know, some, some people think Christianity is, is getting this special thing, you know, this special meeting somewhere. You get something and you're good for the rest of your life. Now, I believe in special um, times of God pouring out His Spirit. Absolutely. There's not one example that I can think of right now in the Bible of when God gave His Spirit and that was enough for all of life. If you remember Acts chapter 2, these apostles and disciples, it's the day of Pentecost. They are filled with the Spirit. Then why in chapter 4 of Acts are they being refilled with the Spirit for them? In Luke chapter 9, I believe it is, Jesus has given power over demons and He sends out His disciples to go preach and, and have power to cast out demons. Then why is it later in that chapter when the, the man brings his son who is demon-possessed and he says, your disciples couldn't do it for you? Because one great time of the Lord, even when He pours His Spirit out, is not enough to get you through life. And one great time of a Bible study or, or two weeks ago when the Lord really blessed you, it is not enough to get you through the next week. You can forget about it. 
You've got to have constant communion with God. Or we're all going to just die. If I don't eat, I die. That's the way it is spiritually. Look in, uh, just hold your place there or just listen. 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. This is the great apostle, the man who literally walked with Jesus for three years. Certainly, he's got new things to say all the time, doesn't he? Well, verse 12, Therefore, I will always be ready to remind you of these things. He's reminding them of the same thing over and over. Verse 13, or verse 12, to remind you of these things, even though you already know them and have been established in the truth which is present with you, I consider it right as long as I am in this earthly dwelling to stir you up by way of reminder. Chapter 3, verse 1. This is now, beloved, the second letter I am writing to you in which I am stirring up your sincere mind by way of reminder. And that's what we do every single day as we reread the Bible year after year, how often we do it. We get up, we read, we pray, we go to church year, week, day after day. This is how we keep the Word of God before us. This is how we live. This is how we live. So look at what he, he begins to do now back in, in Proverbs 4. Man, the Proverbs are such a blessing, aren't they? Verse 20, My son, give attention to my words, he says. All right? But how, how, how is his son to give attention to his words? And let's very briefly take a, a bird's eye view of these eight verses. And I want you to listen to the language that Solomon uses. He is going to name so many of our, our bodily members here. Just over and over. Verse 20, incline your ear. You've got to have your ear here, son, to hear. Verse 21, do not de let them depart from your sight, your eye. you got your ear, you got your eye. Keep them in the midst of your heart, ear, eye, heart. All parts of our body, so to speak, must be involved in this. Second part of verse 22, and health to all their or his body or flesh. The ear, the eye, the heart, your body. Verse 23, watch over your heart. Verse 24, put away from you a deceitful mouth and put, de and put devious speech again the mouth. Verse 25, let your eyes. The second part of verse 25, and let your gaze, again, your eyes. Verse 26, watch the path of your feet. And then at the end of verse 27, turn your foot from evil. My. The ear, the eye, the heart, the body, the heart, the mouth, the mouth, the eyes, the feet. What is Solomon getting at here? And he's getting at my son, if you're going to actually listen to what I say, it's going to take your whole effort. It's going to take everything. Everything. It's going to take your ear. And a picture here is, let me have your ear. Will you lean closer? You're magnifying what's being said? The picture for us here is this. The reason that he uses all these body parts here is that it's going to take a whole Christian to live the whole Christian life. Every single part of us must be involved in Christianity. There can be no closed doors in our heart. I was preaching today at the retirement home about that very thing. That we cannot have our life is like a, a, a building and there's many rooms in, our, in the building. That's how our heart is. And not one door can be closed. We must have Jesus to come in and rearrange anything He wants to. Anything He wants to. Every single thing in our life must be focused on the Word of God. And secondly, look in verse 20. What is it that we give such good attention to? It's not the example of Solomon. Now, we, we certainly follow the example of others. The Bible talks about those things. 
It's not the example that Solomon is so concerned about here. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. It is the very Word of God. With the ear, we hear sermons. We hear teaching. We hear prayers. With the eye, we read the Bible. We read sermons. We read good, healthy Christian books. With the heart, we may say we obey the teaching. I mean, it's, it's just the whole, our whole body with our feet, we, we go to where the people of God are. With, with our feet, we keep away from sin. I mean, it's just the entire picture here of Christianity is a picture of our entire being is just thrown out and given to the things of God here. So these first two verses, all I want us to see right now is that Solomon says, my son, you must have the Word of God always before you. And the reality is this, if, if we don't have the Word of God before us, now, you, m- most of you here, many of you here work today, you, you cannot read your Bible all the time, you cannot listen to sermons all the time, that's not the point. The point is, the Word of God is always with us, the Word of God is in our heart. And the big question is this, if the Word of God is not before us, then what is? Because something is before us. I can be at the golf course and have the Word of God before me. I can can be at the golf course and have the Word of God in my heart. And I'm enjoying God's creation. Maybe i got a Christian brother I'm fellowshipping with. Maybe I've got a lost person I'm playing golf and I'm waiting for the door so I can witness to them on the golf course. I mean, the, the Word of God is before us anywhere we go. Or if I go golfing, is golf before me? And has golf become an idol to me that day? So if the Word is not before us, what is? There's always going to be something before us. Just like uh, it's not a question of if our, our children will be taught, it's only a question of what will they be taught. Because the world is always teaching. Somebody's always teaching. Let it be the Word of God. So let me pause here in these first two verses of Proverbs 4. Always before us, maybe I can ask you all, what are some ways that that you have practiced in your own life, though none of us have reached the goal we want to, we're all pressing forward, but what are some ways maybe that you have in your own life worked to keep the Word of God always before you? What are some ways you've done that? Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I've done that before. It's a good practice, especially if you have a long drive, because our minds wander, don't they? It's, it's a dangerous thing. Even in prayer, our mind wanders. And I think, God willing, next week, I want to talk more about distractions on these last four verses we're not going to get to tonight. But our minds wander. And sometimes they wander in places they ought not go. And for us to have the Word of God in some way before us is a precious treasure. How else has maybe some of you kept the Word of God before you? Yeah. Yes. And that is what we are to do, part of having the Word of God dwell in our heart richly, having the Spirit of God dwell in us, is that we sing hymns and spiritual songs to one another or to ourselves. That's a sign that when you're, when you're working and you've got a, just a melody to the Lord in your heart, that's a sign that the Spirit's working in your heart. That's, a, that's, what, that's what the Bible talks about. Colossians. Colossians and Ephesians. Um, let's see here. Yes. 
Yes, yeah, so, uh, Colossians 3.16, let the Word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And that's... Yes, yes. Solomon is saying yes to that. Anybody else? What about this? Always doing what's right in every single situation that you can. That's how you keep the Word of God before you. Um, it may be the smallest little thing. It may be the biggest thing. It may be you're in a conversation with somebody and it's not being morbid. It's not being introspective. It's not driving ourselves crazy. But we're committed in every little thing or every big thing that we're going to do what's right. And we're going to be wise. And as we do what's right and as we're wise in the big and the small things, we are keeping the Word of God before us because the Spirit is pleased with that. That is walking in the Spirit in many ways, is that we simply, in every aspect of life, we are seeking to do what the Spirit would have us. That is walking in the Spirit. And He will give us blessings. And He will bring Scripture to our mind. And He will keep the Word of God before us. Anybody else? Well, look in verse 22. So we see this, verse 20, verse 21, keep it always before us. The Word of God before us. And as I've said before, some of, the, some of the strongest, best times I've ever had as a Christian has been after a summer camp that maybe I preached or I didn't preach, but I was just there at the summer camp. The Word of God taught every night. Devotions given. Bible studies given. Christians around. Every single day, the Word of God. Hey, that's what Solomon's looking at here. Now, we may not have church service every day, but my friends, to go and hear God's Word, to be with Christians, this is life. This is life. Verse 22. Why do we need to be so careful? Why does Solomon name the ears, the heart, the eyes, the feet, the mouth, and this long list he gives? Why is he talking about being all in? Well, here's why. Verse 22. For they, speaking of God's Word, for they are life to those who find them. This is where life is found at, my friend. Life is found in the Word of God. And health to all their, literally His, body or His flesh. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their body. It's the train tracks that give life to the train. You take the tracks away, the train sinks in mud. It's the tracks that give them life. And it's the Word of God that gives us life and directs our way in this world and, and makes us ready to help our children, ready to help our neighbor, ready to do things that are hard. It's the Word of God that does this work within our heart. I want you to look at a few Scriptures with me now tonight just to bring out this life and this, this health here before us. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy is a book of life, just like all 66 books, including Leviticus, are books of life. Now, we know the Bible makes a distinction between law and gospel. The Bible does that, and we take that into account. And yet, when you turn to Deuteronomy, as a Christian, reading the book of Deuteronomy, it is life after life after life to us. Deuteronomy is the book that Jesus quotes in the wilderness when He quotes the Bible to the devil. It's Deuteronomy. In fact, this verse we're going to look at here, verse 3, is where one of His quotations come from. Which tells us, as maybe some of us have, ha have some of the New Testament memorized, Jesus had the Old Testament memorized. Jesus very well had the entire Old Testament memorized. Deuteronomy 8, verse 3. He humbled you and let you be hungry and fed you with manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, 
that he might make you understand that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by everything that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. And to, for me, preaching and teaching through Proverbs on Wednesday, studying the book of Proverbs throughout leading up to the Wednesday study, it has just reminded me and expanded my mind and heart that there is gold in every part of God's Word. Every crack, so to speak, of God's Word is filled with gold. Every little tiny word, every little syllable, everything. And we've seen some of that in the Proverbs so far. Everything is life from God's Word. Look in Deuteronomy 32. Verse 47, For it is not an idle word for you. Indeed, it is your life, Moses says. And by this word you will prolong your days in the land which you are about to cross the Jordan to possess. I turn to Joshua 1. Just turn over a couple pages to Joshua. What's Joshua's outlook? What's the Lord say to Joshua? Verse 6, 7, and 8, Be strong and courageous, for you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left. And as one of my professors put in us, tried to put in us, so much of the Old Testament goes straight back to Deuteronomy. It goes straight back here to, to Joshua. That's Proverbs. Into Proverbs talks about not stepping out of the left or the right. And here it is, now Joshua, which probably goes back even to Deuteronomy here before us. Turn from it to the right or to the left so that you may have success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that it is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. Does, does anyone remember what a king of Israel was supposed to do according to the book of Deuteronomy? Anybody recall offhand? I'm sure read daily the Word. Yes, yes. That's good. Can anybody remember where that word came from? The king, under supervision of the Levites, I think, was to write his own law out by hand and read it and remember it uh, every day. The Word of God before the king. It's, it's life. It's health. Why, it, it's... And I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. In, in verse 23, it talks about guarding your, guarding your heart diligently because from it flow the springs of life. It's like guarding your water. I mean, you think about if you had poisoned water. What that means is you're drinking poison, you're bathing in poison, your children are bathing in poison, your clothes are being washed in poison, your animals are drinking poison. You're cooking in po poison. You're brushing your teeth in poison. Before you go to bed at night, you got your water beside you. You take a drink. You're drinking poison before you go to bed. I mean, it's just, it's everything in life. And what Solomon would say is this, our heart and the Word of God is more important than our water we drink. We must be sure that our hearts are pure and that we keep God's Word before us. We must be sure of that. Just like in chess, if a checkmate happens, the game is over. You lose your king, it doesn't matter what else you have. You lose the king, it's over. You lose your heart, it's over. It's over. You may have a big car, big boat, big house. You may have a lot of good things. You lose your heart, it's over. It's over. You're dead, you're just waiting to be put in the ground. It's over. So this is, this is life. The Word of God before us. Always before us. Always before us. Look in Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. If 
But I want you to look at this passage. Martha and Mary, their sisters. Martha gets upset. Mary, I'm back here preparing food and you're listening to the Lord. I need help back here. Well, we need Jesus' perspective on this. Look in verse 40. But Martha was distracted with all her preparations and she came up to Him and said, she came to the Lord, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the serving alone? Then tell her to help me. The Lord answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and bothered about so many things, but only one thing is necessary, for Mary has chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. What part did Mary choose? She chose listening to the Word of God. That's it. And that's what Solomon chose. And that's what Solomon is teaching. We must keep the Word of God before us no matter what we neglect, no matter what we give up, the Word of God must be before us always because when they lay us in the grave, that's the only thing that matters is the Word of God and what it's done in our life. That's all that matters. We'll turn to 1 Timothy 4 and then we'll go back to Proverbs First Timothy four, verse sixteen. Jump back to verse fourteen. Do not neglect the spiritual gift within you, which was bestowed on you through prophetic utterance with the laying on of hands by the presbytery. Take pains with these things. Be absorbed in them so that your progress will be evident to all. Pay close attention to yourself and to your teaching. Persevere in these things. Why, why pay such close attention to your teaching for Timothy? For as you do this, you will ensure salvation both for yourself and for those who hear you. Why? Because salvation comes from the Word of God. And we must have the Word of God before us. It's a good word for me especially as a minister. And a, and a prick to prick me on and to help me keep on going. We'll look in Proverbs 4. Verse 22, For they are life to those who find them and health to all. Literally His body here. Not their body. His body. Every part of your body will be benefited by God's Word and every part of your soul, as one man said, will be benefited by the Word of God. It's not a part of our soul and spiritual life that will not be benefited by the Word of God. It will make you a better person. It will make those who are socially awkward better at speaking to people. That's just what the Word of God does. It will make boys men. It will make la little girls ladies. Um, it's, it's the Word of God. It does everything for us. It will ma make us wise businessmen and women. It will make us good businessmen and women. It will do everything for us. It is the Word of God. And I'll tell you what, the more and more you eat of this book, the sweeter and sweeter it becomes. Well, do we have any comments or questions there? From verse 22, this life and health that the Word of God brings to us. I don't think I'm going to go on to verse 23 tonight and maybe... Next week we'll look at that. Maybe the rest of chapter 4 we'll see. Verse 23 is a very, very important verse. And it's some of the teachings of Jesus probably come from this verse, actually. Many of the teachings of Jesus come from this verse, perhaps. So we'll wait off on that tonight. 
But just big picture here, first three verses, uh, it, it, it seems when you think about this and you hear the teaching tonight, it may seem like this is a lot of work, and it is in one sense, but eating is not a lot of work, is it? We actually look forward to that. Um, it's, it's when you find someone who is sick, that's when they don't want to eat. And someone comes and says, you know, it's been hard. It's been hard to get them to eat lately. Well, that's a sign of death or, or grave sickness. So for us, what we want to do as we just live our normal Christian life and we, we love the Lord, we, we're, we love our families, we love our neighbors, we love our church, we just want to see things keep on advancing for the glory of God, we, we're like a crock pot. We turn the crock pot on and you better turn it on early. You're not going to eat because it takes a while for that thing to heat up. And in many ways, our Christian life is like that. we we got to get our heart going. But once we get our heart going, we need to keep it on. And as we keep it on, we don't have to wait hours or days like we have in the past to heat up. Once we get our heart warmed, and once we keep going, keep the fire burning, and this will be just sweetness to our soul. This will be food for our spirits as we just keep God's Word always before us. We're reminded of the good things of the Lord. And that's all that I have tonight. If you want to sum this up, it's a reminder to keep God's Word before you at all times. Don't take your eyes off of it. If you if your eyes get off the Word of God, your eyes have just got on something else. And there's only one pure thing. And that is God's Word.